Good morning, everyone. It's Heather Cooper, playing with paper crafting. I'm a Canadian independent Stemmed Up demonstrator, and I just want to welcome you to my um, Monday morning live Facebook video. And today I'm going to be um, doing another old uh, technique that I'm sort of uh, reviving or reminding everybody about. Um, it's one that I did way back in the day. Um, and I've just been kind of doing a series of uh, older techniques that I'm kind of reviving. So uh, this one is called uh, the faux patina. And um, it basically is like aged metal that gets that sort of uh, oxida oxidated uh, patina look to it. Um, the background of this card is the faux patina effect here. And that's what we're going to try and do today. We'll get going. Okay, so we start with a basic black card base. And I'll just get that folded and then out of the way here. Get some of my tools handy. The black really shows up the effect and also it um, plays up that antique look or that vintage look. So we'll just put that aside. Then I'm taking a piece of um, very vanilla cardstock, um, which is great for the, even though you don't see a whole lot of it as the procedure goes on, um, the very vanilla is a really good color for any vintage kind of work that you're doing. So I'm using um, an embossing folder here. This one is the Parisian Flourish uh, 3D embossing folder. And um, I'm going to find the debossed side, which is the side that has the stamping, stamping Up logo on it. And I'm going to take my Crumb Cake ink pad, and I'm just going to apply the Crumb Cake ink pad directly to that debossed side of the embossing folder. Now those of you who are gasping in shock, it's okay because this washes off because it's a water-based um, ink. It washes off so easily that you will never know it was there. Okay, now I'm just going to um, give my very vanilla a kind of a spritz of water, a couple of spritzes of water, um, just to increase the depth of the embossing here and then I'm going to line it up with the line. I don't know if you can see that line on the embossing folder. I'm just going to line it up with that line so that I get a nice straight embossing and then we're going to bring in my stamping cut in emboss machine turn it this way so the handle's toward me. I'm using the regular platform, standard platform, which is number one, and then I put down my uh, embossing folder, and then I'm using uh, platform number four, or cutting pad number four. It's not a cutting pad, really. It's just a um, platform number four. And I'll just run it back again, just to make sure we get a nice, complete embossing. Move that out of the way, since we can see what we end up with here. So this is the, that's what comes out of that procedure. So 
um, now what we're going to do is we're going to do some sponging. So I'm just going to bring in some scrap paper to put underneath, protect my, protect my work surface. It's just so that it doesn't look awful on the camera after I'm done. And I'm going to use my blender, blending brushes, which I am sold on, absolutely. And I'm going to start with one of the new in colors, Soft Succulent. All right, so I'm just going to ink up the blending brush in the soft succulent and uh, just take off that first first blush of ink and then just add that to my embossed and of course it catches the raised areas first. And let's turn that a little bit, ink it up again. So the colors that you use when you're doing this technique, you probably want to have at least some kind of um, a teal or a blue um, because the patina is obviously sometimes like a copper. Copper is often the metal that um, creates a patina, but um, an orange or a red sometimes works really well too, if you get that in there. Um, those are sort of the typical colors that you can get when you <clears throat> go to do this. All right, the next one I'm doing is another in color. Hi, Eunice. This one's Evening Evergreen, and I'm just using this to kind of heighten the, the design. This really gets into the crevices. Okay, I think that's good. These uh, brushes rinse out beautifully. They sometimes leave a little bit of a stain. Although if I add a drop of detergent, uh, even that goes away uh, almost completely. And then they dry pretty much completely overnight. Uh, what I'm going to do now is just dry the ink really thoroughly and then I'm going to use the embossing buddy just to make sure that the ink is really, really dry on here. do it and then this embossing buddy is just we don't sell them anymore stamping up I'm not sure why but I think you can get them at most craft stores what it does is just reduces any wet um, ink any static electricity any oils and it keeps the embossing powder from sticking where you don't want it so just giving that a good work over with the embossing buddy. Then I'm taking my Versamark and I'm going to apply the Versamark directly from the stamp pad to um, my cardstock. And because it's a, like a rectangular stamp pad, I don't want those edges to show on here. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, apply it and in a twisting motion. Okay, so, um, and I'm going to use two different colors of embossing. I'm going to use copper and gold. Now, I know that Stampin' Up! does not sell copper right now, but they will be starting May 4th. So that's why I'm including it with this, okay? Um, okay, so I'm just going to do a little twist there, and a little twist here, and what else? I do a little twist here. I'm going to start with gold. I guess 
I can get rid of these. Well, maybe I'll keep them out just to get rid of any. Now, if it looks like um, the embossing powder is on here too thickly, which it does kind of look like that right now, then if you have a paintbrush or your finger, then you can just uh, flick some of that off just to make it a little bit more random. So I should probably have used a bit of a lighter hand when I added that bossing powder. I just want <clears throat> some things to be covered. Just clean up maybe some of the underside bits here. And that's going to make it look not quite so heavy handed. And a little bit more um, worn. And also if you see any uh, straight edges there, you can mess those up so that it doesn't look like an ink pad was applied, if you know what I mean. Okay. Okay, let's see how that turns out. So we're going to heat set that now. Let's take some of this and heat set it. Okay, here it goes. This really looks beautiful when it starts to And the heat setting starts to happen. And it's good to turn the um, heat gun in different angles because of the raised portions. That way you make sure you get it all. Okay, I think I've got everything there. Oh, maybe a little bit more needs to get solidified there. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we're going to do the same procedure, only we're going to use the copper this time. We won't have quite so much copper as we did gold. We'll put this back. We'll bring in our Versamark again, and I'm not going to. I'm going to try not to be quite so heavy-handed with that. So, a little bit lighter. Let's see how that turns out. Notice quite a difference with this copper, and I'm wondering how. <laughs> I thought I was being lighter handed with this. Uh, with this copper embossing powder than with the, um, the gold. Maybe 
Okay, I'm gonna bring in my Just mussing it up a bit. There's a straight line there I want to get rid of. Okay. Dump this powder back in. And we'll heat set this. Then we're almost finished. Oh, I better leave this here because I need it for one more blending. So you can see this is a bit of a process. So this is not a quick technique. This is one that you want to do when you've got time to play around. And it's a little bit artistic, so. But look at the blending of the gold and copper together. It looks really nice. Hope you can catch that on the camera. Okay, so you could leave it like this. But if you want, I mean, it's quite bright, so it doesn't look too um, antique or too, ouch, it's <laughs> still hot. It doesn't look too vintage. So if you want to um, add to the vintage look of it, what you're going to do is take some soft suede and holding it like this, you're going to ink up your blending brush. And then you're just going to go over, especially around the edges, and over the design. It just dulls it a little bit and um, adds to that, you know, vintage look. So I'm paying particular attention to the edges, but you can head into the middle a little bit too. If you don't want to dull all that pretty shine, then you keep it as is, but it's supposed to be a vintage look, so. Anyway, that pretty much does it for the faux patina technique. And that's what you end up with. Okay. okay, so let's continue on with making the card now. So we'll put this all together. We're going to add adhesive and for this probably um, liquid glue Tombow is the best gets into all those um, surface cracks fills them up and helps that to stick whereas the tape runners double-sided tape and stuff wouldn't fill in those surfaces and give you um, as much surface area. Um, to glue to. Right, so um, I'm going to open it up to the inside here, use my bone folder just to smooth that out. And then hopefully that will dry and flatten it out. I'm just paying, giving some extra attention to straightening it because um, 
with all the embossing and whatnot that we did, it does tend to get a little bit warped. So the glue hopefully will straighten it out pretty well. There we go. Not bad. All right. Um, the next step is um, I used the stitched rectangle dies to die cut two um, panels, one ba basic black and one of uh, the Simply Elegant um, Designer Series paper that is part of the, the new products that we're using. So I can show you the products though. So this is the Simply Elegant Specialty Designer Series paper, just made for vintage cards. Sorry for the glare. But it's um, black, white, gold, and copper, and a bit of basic gray in there as well. So, and, and you know, all the uh, sort of elegant design flourishes and that sort of thing in that bunch. And then this is the elegantly said uh, stamp set that I'm using today. And it goes along with this um, elegant tag punch. And we'll be using that today as well. So. Okay, so this um, this was the th third, yeah, the third uh, largest uh, rect stitched rectangle die. This was the fourth largest, but it would have been too big. And so what I did was I die cut it, and then I moved the die um, a little bit to the right and a little bit down, uh, about a quarter inch each way, or an eighth of an inch each way, actually and uh, recut it again so that it would be uh, a little bit closer to the size that I wanted for a backing for um, this paper. So I'm just going to, there you can see the other side, I'm just going to add the two here together using the seal here. out of my way. There we go. And do the same on the back here. When I tried to just add the tags to this background, um, it was just a little too busy. The tags didn't show up as much. So I felt that I needed to have a lighter colored um, paper in between. Okay, so now we're gonna work on our tags. I'll just put that aside for a moment. This is what we're, what we're working on here. So I've got three of the tags lined up. Uh, we'll start with our soft succulent one. And um, I have that one already cut. Um, and you can, I'm going to show you how you can make, like this is the, the length of the tag if you just cut it out in here. But I'm going to show you later how you can adjust the length of your tags. Um, so I'm going to, I did this, uh, the original one I stamped happy anniversary in black, but I'm going to see how it looks if I, um, if I emboss it in gold. So we need our embossing buddy for the whole tag here and there's my cat 
And I'm going to ink it up. Now I just want to check edges here. It's not too bad. This one is a little bit hard to get straight because of the um, it's the happy that I have to check to make sure that it's straight. The other one is on a strange angle there. Okay, and now I'm going to add the gold embossing powder. There was an edge on there. Sometimes you don't even notice it until after the powder goes on. And then I wanted to use some of this stamp here to decorate the top of my tag. So I'm just going to ink that up. It's kind of a beautiful. So I'm just going to use this part. Set that. Then I used copper for this little flourish here that I put underneath Happy Anniversary. I'm not sure why I did a little different, but it looks, I just wanted to um, echo the copper that I had on the front, on the patina. So I'll just stamp that in there. Get that all. Okay, and we'll bring in our copper. And then what I did was I added um, some gold all around the edges of this. So now what I'm going to do is just add um, a little bit of Versamark all around the edges of the card here and just try to get in the little cracks around. Sorry, I'm going to move it over here. It's a little bit hard to get in those little cracks there, but we'll see how I did. Where's my gold? Here we are. much we'll use the brush to just get 
rid of some of that. Use a little bit in there. I'm going to have to brush this away again. Okay. Trying to um, brush out the middle of those little curly Q areas there. And I might need my tweezers here and hold it right there because there's not extra gold in that area. And just came full force through my window. There we go. Okay, so that's oh, that's better. I think that is all the embossing that we need to do today. Okay, so now we're going to make the other two uh, tags. So for this one, uh, the length that we need is four and three eighths. So I need to cut it just above where I want the end of the tag to be. Maybe a little bit, because it'll only go in there so far, only fit to the end of the punch. So uh, you have to cut the width of the tag at, um, one and three quarters or just a little bit less, slightly less than one and three quarters, and then you'll be able to fit it in where you want it. No, nope. I need to cut it a little bit less than that. It's almost there, but not quite. Okay, let's try that. And if you have trouble getting it in there, sometimes if you can fit one part on the side, in that little slot and then the rest of it will fit in. Once you get that there. There we go. Let's make sure that's straight. Okay, so I've got that done. And then this one, what we're going to do is we're going to cut the end so um, we're going to lift this up through and bring it all the way to the end. But, okay, there's the end. So again, we cut it at one and three quarter inches, width, strip that width, and then pull it through so it wouldn't cut the back. And then I just want to have this one straight. So I've marked the length that I want it. So I'm just going to, you could use a um, trimmer to get it nice and straight, but I've only got room for so much equipment here, so I'll just use my scissors. 
All right, so then this will glue onto here. And then we're going to use um, dimensionals to pop that one up on the back here. So we will add some seal and match the end of this one up with the end of the black, like so. Then we are going to use some black dimensionals on this. So we'll add that on sort of midway between both. Okay, and then we will add some adhesive. Actually, I should have probably done that before. And we will add that to our card, which is almost finished now. So we'll give about a quarter of an inch from the left and overlap top, um, what's the word I want? Overshoot the top and the bottom there. Okay, and then this cord, this um, elegant trim, I guess it's called, I think that's what it is. We're going to tie a bit of a bow. I love trim like this that has its own curl to it because you just get just um, kind of looks elegant when you get it on your project. And if you twist it um, when you're adjusting it, you can get it to turn the way you want it to. Let's see here. There. And we will get a glue dot. Okay, and then this goes right about here with the dimension with the glue dot and I'm gonna give that a little bit of a twist here. And then we'll trim that off. Okay. And that is a card using the simply elegant a uh, group of products and uh, from the new uh, catalog, the new annual catalog, which goes live on May the 4th. And um, the full patina technique in the background. So that is my Facebook Live this Monday morning. I hope you enjoyed it. And join me again next Monday for another Facebook Live. Thanks for joining me, everyone. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.